It's 3.30. Erica should be joining soon. Hi, Erica. And we're okay right now. We're just waiting for the connection. And yes, I am going to the NCAA tournament and Final Four. So, Erica's here. Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> So we are here with Erica McCall of the Indiana Fever. She has two Final Fours under her belt, three Elite Eights, three Pac-12 championships. She went 118 and 28. I mean, sis, what don't you do? She now hey, plays for the Indiana you. Fever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell, tell the fans or the viewers out there a little bit about yourself and what you're doing now. Um, well, like you said, I'm Eric McCall from Bakersfield, California. Graduated from Stanford University in 2017. Currently playing for the Indiana Fever, and right now I'm overseas in Hungary, uh, playing in my second year here. So yeah, it's a big basketball journey, but um, I'm blessed to be here. Yeah, so overseas life, that's got to be, like, extremely difficult. I know a couple of my friends played in Russia, and I went out there to visit them, and I'm like, I don't know how y'all do this, up like, eight months out of the year. So talk right. a little bit about your overseas experience and how that is. Um, so far, so good. Uh, this is my second year actually playing with the same team in Hungary. So I really enjoyed my experience last year. It's a struggle because, um, you know, I'm the only American here. I'm the only black person uh, in this town of like 40,000 people. So it's a big adjustment, a tough adjustment, you know, from the food to the apartment you live in to the walk. You got to learn how to drive around the town. So it's a huge adjustment. But once you get settled and everything gets rolling, then you're great. And then the basketball aspect of it is crazy because it's, I personally think it's a lot more physical out here. Uh, I was about yeah. to ask you, like, what's the difference <laughs> of style? Yeah, I think it's a lot more physical. Um, but then again, I'm playing more of a five position out here as opposed to WNBA and playing the four. So there's a lot more banging down there in the post. But uh, it's a joy. You know, you have to adjust to it. And, you know, the speed of the game is a little different. It's a little slower than WNBA, but not much of a difference. But once you get adjusted and everything starts rolling, I personally think it's a lot of fun because it's all about your perspective and how you perceive things. And so if you think it's a good experience, then it's going to be a good experience. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. After the physically taxing year that you guys just had because of travel and everything on that condensed schedule, and you go overseas and get beat up basically during the game, yeah. it's like, how do you maintain your body and everything like that? Uh, just doing a lot of uh, foam rolling. That's like my thing mm -hmm. out here now, as opposed to when I'm back in the States, I like rarely do it. But when I'm out here, I like it's my just that hurt. I a lot that. of foam <laughs> rolling. Yes, <laughs> a lot of foam rolling, a lot of stretching. I have a pretty good uh, strength and conditioning coach out here that helps me a lot with, um, you know, restoring my body, making sure that I'm, you know, staying away from injuries and doing a lot of prevention stuff. So. Uh, with that, you know, I've been actually hanging out and uh, doing well. My body's doing well. My knees are, are still mm -hmm. rolling, so they're still, they're still doing well. So you're the only American on the team, and yeah, I know that there are multiple teams in one area. Do you have any friends, like, near you that you can, like, call up and be like, hey, sis, let's hang out, or what's going on over there? Uh, there's a few people that I know. Uh, Rashonda Gray, uh, oh, she's okay. kind of assigned to the New York Living. She lives, like, uh, three hours away from me. Mm -hmm. Um Let's see here. That's probably like my only closest friend I have out here. Um, and I have a friend on the men's side who plays like two hours away from me. So sometimes we kick it. But other than that, it's just me out here. My town's very small. Nothing much to do. The funnest thing I have to do out here is just go to the store. <laughs> walk around. You shop? You shop? Have you picked up a hobby or anything? Yeah. <laughs> I just walk around. People watch try to find something to do but uh you know it takes some time to adjust but hey so <laughs> you what, are, what are you you have that look at the comments that's hilarious uh so you <laughs> have a couple more months before you come back and um you know the indiana fever is celebrating its 20th anniversary and it's you know a theme of love and you wrote a letter to basketball Ta mm -hmm. tell the viewers a little bit about that and and how that came about and like speak from your heart about you know what you love yeah, so hashtag Fever 20. We got the 20th year for the Fever. It's going to be big. You know, we got a lot of changes coming up. Uh, we have a new president. You know, Catch, Tamika Catchings is the, the vice president of director of the operations. So uh, there's a lot of changes. And, of course, we have our staff. But it's going to be a lot of fun. I think that the theme that they came up with here uh, is going to be very touching. It's going to bring a lot of fans 
uh, to watch our, our, you know, our games and experience, you know, what we go through. But for me, you know, the love of the game is just all about my passion for the game that I had, you know, since I was younger. And, you know, when I first started ball, my dad was in the backyard. My dad's like, do you want to take basketball serious? And I said, yes. And from there, he was like, okay, you have three things you got to do. He's like, you know, you got God, family, school, and ball, or four things. And those yes, are the things. <laughs> yes, those are exactly. Amen. And that's that's been the foundation of my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, then when I graduated from school, you know, of course, I just been having ball to focus on. But, you know, those three things, God, family, and ball have, you know, kept me very grounded in, in my life and it's helped me really maintain my love for ball because sometimes there's a lot of distractions or sometimes mm-hmm. there's a lot of people in your life that try to distract you from things and or can make ball very demanding for you and not mm-hmm. fun. And I, my parents have done a very good job of keeping ball very fun for me and uh, allowed me to keep loving the game. And that's why I'm here today. So you spoke about family and obviously you have a sister in the league, um, Dewana Bonner. So how, how is it like to have a family member that plays professional ball too? And then, you know, your dad who played basketball too, like how, how is that? Oh, it's, it's amazing. We're just one big basketball family, really. Just have a sister in the league. When I was coming up to watch her play, I used to go to all her games when they came to play and uh, to play at LA. We used to go to Phoenix. I was actually there and they won the championship, her first championship. So being able to experience that has really gave me a, a even bigger craving to play in the league. And she's just a huge inspiration for me. Always texting me words of advice. Uh, when we first played last year, that was our first time ever playing against each other. That's um, so crazy. I was so <laughs> nervous. Oh my goodness, it was so nervous. But my dad, he was on the sidelines like he was our coach, which didn't. Mm-hmm. I know he was. <laughs> Coach he was going crazy. Yeah. I love that. I love crazy. that. It was, it's a lot of fun to be in a big basketball family. I have a little brother, two little brothers that play, one in college and one that's in high school. And, you know, just we always say it's in the blood. That's like our, our family theme. It's in the blood. And oh, that's so dope. That's, that's what we live by. And yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah. What do you tell a younger person? You have younger siblings. So, like, what would you tell a younger person out there that's watching you play when they're, you know, maybe in middle school or high school and trying to get where you are? Have fun. Have fun because that's what's going to keep you going. That's what's going to make you better. If you're not having fun with it, then you're just going to want to give it up, and it's going to be tough. Uh, so continue to have fun and work hard because hard work is where – is how I got to the position I am today, you know. I was never, you know, the best scorer, the best rebounder, but I knew if I was, you know, first down the court or, you know, just being the hardest worker, then I knew I could get to, you know, the WNBA, you know, but who would have thought I would have done that when I was younger. But as time progressed on, I could continue to work hard. Hey, this guy's So what part of your game would you brag on, though? You said you're not the best scorer, the rebounder. You're like, <laughs> okay, sis, but you did all this work. But what, what's, what's a strength of your game? Uh, blocking shots. Blocking shots is my thing. Uh, and when I get a block shot, I am a, a different person. It's it's incredible some of the celebrations I come up with. <laughs> <laughs> Can I you show us one? You got a little dance or something, you know? <laughs> oh, man, I'm beating my chest. I'm flexing. I'm going crazy. My, my facial expressions are absolutely ridiculous, exactly. And it's... <laughs> <laughs> it makes it makes the game so much fun for me blocking shots is it's my favorite part of the game my favorite mm-hmm. part so you did a lot of blocking in college and we see what happened yesterday with the leak bracket so we saw your tweets about it mm-hmm. and you you know share the same sentiments as tasha cloud and like skylar diggins smith and right. me frankly just talk a little bit about how you felt about espn leaking the brackets and you know your disappointment in that Right. I was highly upset because not only as a, a former player, but as a fan of, of the college game, you know, this is something I look forward to. You know, I was going to stay up late to watch, <laughs> to watch the, the celebration from teams. And, you know, sometimes yeah. there's teams that make the, the tournament for the first time. I don't think that happened this year. But if you could imagine, you know, how they would have felt if they didn't get the opportunity mm-hmm. to, to really express their emotions about making the tournament. And it's just a huge disappointment. Um, it's a shame, really, that, you know, that ESPN let this happen. And, um, you know, so I had to voice my opinion on it. And I'm glad there's a lot of fans and players that agree with me. And, 100%. You know, <laughs> and, you, know, <laughs> you know, they try to make for make up for it by, you know, releasing it two hours early. But then it just ruined it. a lot of viewing parties for teams. And, you know, I know in, on, on the West Coast, there's players still in classes that they couldn't mm-hmm. get out of class. And I'm sure there's a lot of teams that couldn't ground up the whole team to watch it and to celebrate together. So... It's in a very unfortunate situation, and I hope they can find a way to make up for it. 
I hope they can too. Can you talk a little bit about the pressure that March Madness brings, whether good or bad, and what, what's needed for preparation for that? Oh, uh, March Madness, man, it's it's ridiculous. But they say pressure builds diamonds, right? So oh, uh, uh, shout out to <laughs> <laughs> So um, for some teams, you know, it, it's tough. You know, sometimes the pressure gets to you. You know, you have a lot of uh, fans and non-fans that are like, down your neck telling you need to do this do that and really you know you really just have to x them out and just listen to your coaches and um the teams that have you know worked hard all the way up to the season and have you know great scouting reports and, and know how to to respond to just a, a, a game just one game because it's tough uh you know in conference you you know you played the teams several times and you know what to do but during march madness you got one That's opportunity <laughs> one opportunity uh, who did you hate playing against? Like, who was your biggest rival? Like, who did you hate? Whether it be regular season or, like, tournament time. Regular season, tournament time. Okay. Uh, so, regular season, we hate playing Arizona State because they are just defensive hounds. Like, they are on you. It's a very physical game. Uh, yeah, we hated playing them. And then, uh, let's see, during tournament time, we always played, I played Notre Dame how many times? <laughs> Three times. Three times. Uh huh. Three times. Uh, Freaking Notre Dame, man. <laughs> exactly. And Stanford actually is on the same side, the same bracket as them. They, Notre Dame has a one seed, Stanford has a two, so that's going to be interesting again. Yeah. Notre Dame, they're just a tough team. They're a very good team. They have a very good coach, very good, uh, very good players with great uh, scouting reports. So it's always a tough game to play against them, and hopefully Stanford can pull it out this year again. <laughs> Hopefully, okay. hopefully. I mean, y'all had some great breaks, so, you know. Y'all got some great breaks, and that seed is looking good. So yes, let's, yes, let's yes. get it for March Madness. Hey, so I'm going to open up the floor to the fans or the viewers okay. and ask you a little bit, you know. There have been questions around here, so let's see. Okay. Hmm. Thoughts on Liz Cambage's open letter about the gender pay disparity in professional basketball? All right. Wow. It's <laughs> a good question. Mm-hmm. First things first, we deserve to get paid more. We don't necessarily have to talk numbers because that's still in the works. Um, but we deserve to get paid more. We work just as hard as any other athlete. And, you know, the only reason why we don't get paid is because there's people out there that don't respect our game just because we're women. That's yeah. the simple fact of it. Um, you know, telling us to go back in the kitchen, you know, that joke is so old. <laughs> but... Uh, like, like come up with another joke guys. exactly like, exactly you know <laughs> so many people out there that 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 just love to hate just because we're women and you know i tell them to come to the game come play some one-on-one -on -one. they always say you want to play in one-on-one -on -one? i guarantee it 100 percent we're all gonna be court we're all gonna be exactly and so when we start getting the respect that we deserve which i believe is coming very soon then our uh, our wages will go up um, but people just need to start seeing, you know, who we are, what we do, and just respect us more. And when that comes, then, yeah, then I, I think we'll get what we'll deserve. Y'all deserve a lot more. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions? You know, it can be loaded like that one or, or not. <laughs> <laughs> we got the brackets. We got who won. Let's see. Great values. Okay. Uh, and so somebody asked a question um okay. they're saying facts preach just tell us you know <laughs> something off the court that we should know about bird wait first of all why did they call you bird and then why second, they call me something bird? yeah <laughs> so uh janae lumake came up with that uh that nickname for me my freshman year because we had two ericas on the team mm -hmm. and um just because my last name is because i'm like mccall <laughs> 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 Don't be exactly. shocked if I'm not on the sideline screaming that. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why they call me Bird, and everyone has called me Bird since, like, that's my basketball name. Sometimes even I have aunts and uncles that call me Bird. I'm like, no, my name is Erica. <laughs> 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 no, it's Erica. Get it's right. Erica. But, yeah, everyone calls me Bird. I love it, so. What was the transition like playing in the WNBA directly after you, uh, your last college season? It was a tough transition. Okay, some things were easier because, um, like, the offense we ran was very similar to the offense we ran at Stanford. So uh, I was comfortable with that coming into the league. But there's just a lot of new concepts that are different. You know, just one of the biggest things being, you know, the uh, three-second rule for def defensive three-second rule. Like, we 
send them the paint, you know, I'm ready to block shots left and right in, in, in the league, you know, you know, I'm like super anxious just being, you know, being in there. I don't even really want to be in there for a second. <laughs> He's about. like, y'all not going to hear me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So defensive concepts, offensive concepts, you know, knowing to rise and, and attacking more and just, it's just a lot more reading that I had to get used to that I'm still really trying to get used to. Um, so it's it's a it's a big transition and it's a big adjustment, but you have great coaches, great staff, great teammates that have really helped me, especially because I was the only rookie on my team my uh, my rookie year. So yeah. that was tough, uh, but I had a lot of great teammates that helped me. Well, that now year. you have a y lot of young people with you. <laughs> like, exactly. you're good now. I was so happy when we got some rookies. I was so happy. <laughs> There's more young people <laughs> I can hang out with. I love that. The Indiana organization is the leading way, hiring more women in executive positions throughout the organization. What are your thoughts? What are my thoughts? I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, <laughs> very excited for Ketch. Um, to me, Ketch has deserved this. Mm -hmm. If you were to talk to her, the girl, the, the girl, the lady, the woman that she is, she is incredible. Just her knowledge of the game, the knowledge of mm -hmm of uh, being in the front office, even when she wasn't in the front office, is absolutely amazing. So I'm very excited for her, and I'm very excited to see about the things that she's going to help us with uh, this year. As far as our new president, Allison Barber, I was, this, you know, they gave us a lot of information on her before she came, and it's incredible. She worked in the White House. She worked with Red Cross, and she's just been in very high positions that I think are going to really help her uh, transition well to being the president of our organization. And I think... Uh, they're going to help us become very successful. And so on and off the court, and it's going to help us uh, really connect with fans more and, you know, just get younger girls to really come see w more WNBA games and just really uh, see what we're all about and, you know, see that, hey, anything's possible if they watch us. I challenge everybody out there that's listening to this to bring some family, some friends bring to a fan, game. Anybody. It's, your, anybody. it's the best days, guys. It's really important. I promise you. Right. That's um, right. Erica, who do you have winning on the men's side and the women's side? Ooh, I'm just filling out my brackets before this. Men's side, I got Duke. I hey, am a big Zion fan. I loved him since high school, and it's mm -hmm. been incredible to see him just dominate the game in college. For him to come back after that that gruesome injury that he had and to be yeah. to be the MVP of the conference tournament, I was highly impressed. And I think when all those freshmen are rocking, you know, the whole Duke team is rocking, it's – they're a very tough team to beat. Now, would I love to see that uh, that North Carolina and Duke matchup again? That's going to be incredible. I really hope that happens for the national championship. But I got Duke winning by like two points. I think it's going to be a very close game. As far as the winning, woo! <laughs> so I put a couple <laughs> brackets because I have Stanford winning in one of my brackets, of course. I always got my, my Stanford fan winning. Okay, but if I'm not going to say Stanford, I won't say my Stanford bias, then I got actually got Baylor winning. I think yeah, they're what? Baylor winning. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Kalani doing some work down. She, yes. I, you know. <laughs> okay, so now they haven't made the final four in several years. Yeah. But I yeah. think I was just looking at this out of the bracket and I think that they um uh, they're the strongest team. I don't think anyone can beat them going at least going into the final four. Uh but then I think they'll have to probably match up with Mississippi State, which will be very tough. Um, I mean, it's honestly what we're waiting for, right? We exactly. Have to have to have it's like big versus big. It's like, oh, I don't think this I is for your position in the draft. Come on, John. I am highly looking forward to that. And I'm hoping that we might draft one of them. Um, be the number. We got the number uh, three pick, the third pick. So, uh, yeah, we can easily draft one of them. And, oof, they're incredible players. Just the way that they finish and their rebounding is, she's, uh, Tierra McCown's averaging like, 20 and 15. It's incredible. And then she'll stare I, you down. And it's just like, oh, that's I how you feel? Did you exactly. ever have a situation where somebody stared you down in a game? How would you feel? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, nah. I did. I remember. I remember. Bashar Graves from Tennessee stared me down when we played him at home. And um, that was uh, when I did. I just kind of chuckled because I, I thought it was fun. It was a very intense game. And then, like, the next game, I got a big play against Tennessee. So, you know, we got each other back. And, uh, it's it's fun. I never can take the game too seriously. I hate when people, you know, yeah. start getting petty with things. I'm like, this is the, this is a game. It's it's never too serious. And so when somebody stares me down, I'm like, hey, you, you got, you got. I would trip them. See this guy play basketball. Play. I got your next play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, your WNBA draft thoughts. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, we got the third pick. Should be very interesting because I'm loving this draft this year because everything is up in the air. You don't know if Sabrina Nesby's going to come out. Mm -hmm. That could shake up some things. If she does, she could go number one. But then again, Dylan Beard loves big, so I don't know if he could ever pass up on another great center coming in that could that really gel well with, with Asia Wilson. Mm -hmm. So um, it's up in the air. You know, We'll see what Sabrina Nesby does. She's an incredible player and represents the Pac-12 so well, so I'm glad that she's doing that, but if she comes out, I think she, I think she may go number one. Oh, hot take, y'all heard me? <laughs> <laughs> hot take, there we go. <laughs> I think she may go number one, just just as, as time is going on and you know, there's more talk about the draft, I think she'll go number one. And uh, her and Kelsey Klum, woo, that's gonna be a, a great People duel. forget, Kelsey's a bucket, so. Oh, <laughs> boy, do we know, Stan <laughs> killed us, she killed us. We beat them. I think we beat them by like maybe five, but she still had like forty on us. So we were like, "Hey, we got to take That's one of the other." That's what happens when you set the NCAA record. <laughs> you just you just drop a slight forty. I mean, exactly, okay. exactly. <laughs> so that's gonna be very good. When New York has the second pick, uh, they need they need a little bit of everything. So they could take a big. <laughs> Is right now they have a we lot of, they have a lot of free spots you know they haven't signed mm -hmm. a lot of people yet in free agency so they need guards and bigs so it'll be interesting who they pick I mean I'm sure as close the draft comes closer and closer they'll sign more people but as of right now you know they don't have a lot of people signed so like I said they can take anybody so they can take a big or a guard and um, we we've always need a big for a while now um, we're just a, a smaller team so a center would be very good for us and so I'm hoping we can take. Maybe one to play with Tori. I'm just throwing that out there. Yes, uh, that would be great. Maybe that one Tori and that and Tierra, that that combination will be will be great. I mean, I think it'll be very exciting, and I I love both of their personalities. It's going to be a lot of fun if she comes to Indiana. So it's going to be a very fun season. So pause. I know I'm supposed to be like asking the the viewer questions, but what is your personality like? Like, what is your personality? I know theirs, but I, I need to know yours. I'm very goofy. Love to sing, love to dance, love to crack jokes. Jokes not may not be good, may be corny, but hey, <laughs> it's gonna make you chuckle a little bit. But that's me. I'm, I just love to have fun, and I'm very chill. And yeah, well, I love to entertain people. I love to say that entertainer. I hear that. <laughs> this is gonna be our last question because we have talked right. and talked. And talk. Oh wait, no, right. we have two more. Um, you got you had a great showing in the last tournament you competed in. What was it like having a matchup like Asia in the final four? It was a great game. Shout out to the ones that pay attention. Yes. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was uh, an incredible game. Asia, so we had a plan because, you know, Asia's a great player and Stanford is a very good team at doubling bigs. We do a very good job of scouting that. So we had her on lock the first half. And we were feeling very confident, very good. We before that, like we had um, before going into halftime, we were always down, and then we'd always make some miraculous comeback and win. So like mm -hmm. we didn't know how to feel. <laughs> we were up, um, and maybe that was a bad thing for us that we went up. And you know, and so the second half, I mean, Asia just went off on us. She did Asia things, and she was <laughs> Asia did Asia things. Right. <laughs> she did Asia things. You know, we couldn't contain her. And, and granted, you know, one of my, my guards, Carly Samson, got hurt. And, you know, that really affected us. But still, she was unstoppable in that second half. And it was a great game. And, and they deserve to win that national championship. So I'm glad that at least if we lost, hey, at least we lost to the national champions. Absolutely. Okay. We're going to leave everybody on this. Uh, you know, I started with the WNBA is so important. I just want you to tell everybody why you feel the WNBA is so important. The WBA is so important because we are leaders and we are the future. We are women that empower women and we go out there and we work our butts off every night and um, we deserve respect. Therefore, that's why the WBA is so important. And with that, Erica, I will let you <laughs> get that. So whatever you are doing over there with that time difference, <laughs> go. <laughs> Go to sleep or something. I don't know. I don't even know how big of a time difference it is. But it was great talking to you. Great talking to you. All right. All right. Bye, guys. See ya.